How you doing guys? Big Mac Dan School here again today, back once again with another episode of my Conquest series for you. Today we're going to be taking a look through the pages of issue 62. So, like I said, in today's episode we're going to be taking a look through the pages of issue 62. But first of all, I want to remind you to check out my latest painting video. That's the reverse from issue 3 of Conquest and I painted them using the contrast paints. I also do a quick comparison to the traditional painting method I used on the three intercessors that I painted and displayed two weeks, three weeks ago, um, around three weeks ago now. Um, yeah, so uh, check out my painting videos as well. They always go up on Mondays if you're looking for something to watch on a Monday morning. They go up around seven or eight o'clock, something like that. Um, I'm just uh, trying to find the right time slot at the minute, um, but also. If you are not interested in my Imperial Fists, which who wouldn't be, but if you're not interested in them, um, you can check out the Hobby Corner. Um, there's plenty of building and painting of Conquest miniatures over on the Hobby Corner. Uh, check that out and um, yeah, subscribe if you're not already. Right, back to the issue. So what do we get this week? We get the Galvanic Servo Haulers. This isn't the complete kit, so we're going to have to do a bit of division here. Um, I think we're going to get the other part of the kit in just another issue. So it being spread over two issues, it's a £30 kit in total. Um, split between two issues, £15. So we're saving about £7 in a penny, or exactly £7 in a penny, on each uh, each issue that you're getting part of the Galvanic Servo Haulers kit in. Uh, we're getting the tractor unit and the uh, lifter unit, um, which I'll go into more detail when I get into the inside of the magazine rather than the front cover. So what do we get on the front cover? We get Galvanic Server Haulers, as I've just mentioned. Uh, learn about Crimson Fist. So an Imperial Fist successor chapter there. We get to learn a little bit about them. And discover the Adeptus Custodes. We're getting a lot more factions now, thick and fast. The closer we get to the end of um, this subscription, this run, um, 80 issues in total, we're on 62. So after this, we've got 18 left. Um, the closer we get to the end, the more... Um, the more factions are throwing at us, so we're learning more and more about the wider universe. The first page, we've got Crimson Fists. Amongst the first of the Imperial Fist successors, the Crimson Fists have a history marked by terrible disaster and horrifying losses. Despite their misfortune, these brave defenders of the Imperium continue to battle humanity's enemies with the righteous fury and stubborn will of their Primarch, Rogal Dawn, the greatest of all Primarchs. Um, their homeworld is Rin's world, the Primarch Rogal Dawn, as I've just said. Specialists, orc fighters, uh, being an orc collector myself, I mean, I'm tempted to paint up some of the miniatures that I've got from Conquest, or some extra miniatures I might have from Dark Imperium and stuff, as Crimson Fist, maybe make a last wall army like uh, Chapter Master Balrax doing. Siege Warfare is also one of their specialisms. It's a uh, specialism of their parent chapter, the Imperial Fists, as well. Um, and Bolter Drill, which uh, the Imperial Fists themselves are handy with bolters as are the Crimson Fist, as it states here. Famous battles, the Siege of New Rin City and the Battle of Traitor's Gorge. Flicking over to the next page, it gives us more details. Let's touch on uh, Alexis Pollux, the Crimson Fist. Um, so Alexis Pollux was the first chapter master of the Crimson Fist and he was actually uh, an Imperial Fist before he was a Crimson Fist. So um, he served as captain of the Imperial Fist 405th Company. It shows how big the legions were. At the time, there was uh, at least 405 companies in the Imperial Fist um, during the Horus Heresy. He fought alongside such mighty heroes as Sigismund and Rogal Dawn. Sigismund being the uh, first chapter master of the Black Templars as well. Uh, so there's a little bit of information about Pollux there for you. Uh, the Indomitus Crusade, the Imperial, sorry, the Crimson Fist finally get the reinforcements they've been so desperately in need of for centuries after the disaster at Rin's world. Um, and the squad markings are slightly different. They don't display the company markings on the shoulder trim like typically um, the Codex compliant chapters do. They are, for the majority, Codex compliant. However, they don't display company colours on the shoulder pads. And the lieutenants, instead of having that white stripe with a red stripe down the middle on the helmet, they just have a solid red stripe down the middle of the helmet. In the artwork, you'll notice they've all got a red left fist. Now, every Imperial Fist has one red left fist until uh, they gain veteran status, basically. When they gain veteran status, they, they earn the right to paint the right fist red as well. 
And then uh, there's more information about another Space Marine chapter's successors. Um, so the White Scar successor chapters here. Uh, let's try and pick out a few interesting ones, shall we? I did read through this earlier today, but I've forgotten all the information I read. Uh, let's pick out the Storm Lords. So as a second founding successor of the White Scars, the Storm Lords can trace their history back to the time when Jagatai Khan hunted across the stars. They maintain a strong rivalry with their parent chapter, frequently competing for glory. They are well known for hunting down orc wars. So uh, another orc fighter there that I've uh, picked out. And then um, over the next page is the Mantis Warriors. Um, the Mantis Warriors are a chapter teetering on the brink of annihilation. They chose the wrong side during the Badab War. They sided with the Astral Claws. Um, they were granted the Emperor's forgiveness, but sent upon a century-long penitent crusade and had their homeworld given to the space, space sharks, the Karcharodons or Charcharodons. I always forget which way around it is. Um, but yeah, they, uh, they're uh, one that teetered on the, on the brink of renegade status there. Um, over to the next page, we get more information about Space Marines, but not a particular faction. Uh, this is Vanguard Veterans, and uh, it talks about how Vanguard, Vanguard Veterans are specialists at um, striking where they are most needed. Um, you'll often see them wearing jump packs, so they can get across the battlefield a lot quicker than... Um, your typical infantry because they are jump infantry rather than your standard infantry um, and yeah but they can be equipped with uh, just the standard power packs as well and then you might want to mount them in a rhino or something like that um, it's a way to get more swords and more hammers and stuff into your space marine forces uh, if you want you can go for lightning claws or thunder hammers uh, these are all special weapons that they employ um, they yeah that they, they, they use on the battlefield um, because they are veterans because the veterans are trusted with some some of the relics of the chapter um, so you'll see them armed rather than just with a standard bolt gun you might see them with a pistol and a sword or you might see them with a shield and a hammer something like that on to the next page we've got the forces of the adeptus custodes and it talks about on these pages how um, the custodes for years uh, during the horus heresy or prior to the horus heresy sorry um, they were the Emperor's bodyguard. During the Great Crusade, they went out across the galaxy with the Emperor um, at the forefront of the Crusade until he retreated to Terra. Um, and then they were still seen abroad in the galaxy um, in various situations, like when um, the, I think it was Ulanor, um, at Ulanor, the Great Victory at Ulanor, they were there. Oh, that was, I guess, part of um, when, when the Emperor handed over power in the Great Crusade to the War Master gave uh, he, he he anointed Horus War Master of his uh, Crusade so um, yeah so they would have still been around then anyway and then after that they were seen on worlds like Prospero when um, the Emperor's Justice was being meted out to the Thousand Sons um, but for 10,000 years they've just been sat guarding the corpse of the Emperor uh, the corpse of the Emperor sits on the Golden Throne held together by psychic will and um, magical uh, magical machinery of the Golden Throne itself. Um, and that is what lights the beacon of the Astronomicon, which enables warp travel in the Imperium, uh, or enables safe, safe warp travel in the Imperium, actually. Um, so, yeah, the Custodes now, uh, now that Gilliman's back and he, he went on a crusade of his own to Terra from, from Ultramar, um, yeah, he went to have a private word with the with his almost dead father um, and then when he came out of the chamber with his father he uh, basically he got into discussions with the custodes and the custodes were uh, agreeing to go out across the galaxy on a another crusade um, this time of Gilliman's making and Trajan Valoris uh, the uh, is it Captain General? I think it's Captain General of the custodes uh, Captain General Trajan Valoris, leader of the Adeptus Custodes, met with the Lord Commander of the Imperium, Rebute Gilliman. After many hours' discussion behind closed doors, the psychic protection on behind closed doors and psychic protection, the two commanders decided that, in the wake of the Great Rift, the Adeptus Custodes should set out and combat the Emperor's enemies once again. So, yeah, um, in the Indominus Crusade, they went out with the Space Marines and to various parts of the galaxy where the where the fighting was thickest, uh, because they are 
they are a cut above space marines. Um, they are space marines are say a human's here, a space marine's here, and then a, a custo is like way above a space marine, where you're not quite as far above as a space marine is to a human, but um, you know you get the general idea. Um, so there's a showcase over the next couple of pages, a lovely showcase here. Uh, the first picture is of a Virtus Praetor um, on a jet bike. Yes, a Virtus Praetor is the individual and the jet bike is the mount. Yeah. Uh, so there's a Virtus Praetor on the jet bike. The jet bikes are armed with Dawn. Uh, the, it's a Dawn Eagle jet bike and it's armed with Hurricane Bolters. Over to the next page, we've got um, three guys at the top here. There's a shield captain in the center and two custodian warden, wardens either side. Uh, there's an Alaris Praetor, um, uh, sorry, a Vexillus Praetor in Alaris Terminator armor. It's been a while since I've looked at any custodes, so I don't quite know all the units, and they're all quite uh, similar looking in terms of armor. Uh, and then there's three different color schemes for the custodes at the bottom here. Um, different shield companies. The custodian guard of the, of the shadow keepers are the ones in black armor. Um, when I eventually get around to painting a small unit of custodes, I will probably paint mine in black armor. Uh, custodian Guard of the Solar Watch are the ones in white armour in the middle and the Emissaries Imperatus are the ones in gold armour on the left of the screen behind me. Then it's how to build Galvanic Servo Haulers. Just two pages of how to build, it's nice and easy, we're only getting half the kit so there's not too much to go together really. Um, I've already got some built so I'm going to be using the tracks off this for another project or you know some of the tracks if not all of them for another project that I've got in the pipeline, down the line somewhere. Um, on to the next page we get how to paint galvanic servo haulers. We get the paints displayed on the first page and they're using red, uh, the Mephiston red that we've got. Um, they're using that to paint the galvanic servo haulers and to be fair, flicking through the pages you see it come together bit by bit. Looks really nice on the last page, not like amazing. Um, you might want to do some battle damage and stuff, some further battle damage on the last page there. They have um, They've done a dry brush to make it look kind of dusty at the bottom of the front of the vehicle. But, um, oh, it's a Necron compound dry brush actually, so it, it makes it look sort of chipped a little bit, but I'd, I'd like it a bit more than that. I'd maybe do a dry brush of black and then dry brush of Necron compound over the top of the black, something like that, to just uh, make it look a little bit more damaged than they've made it do. But... It, they look good anyway, they look good and there's a little toolbox there and a fire extinguisher for you to add to your scatter terrain. On to the mission, the rules terrain, sorry. Uh, galvanic servo haulers. Uh, galvanic servo hauler rules when a model targets an enemy infantry model that has all of its model within three inches of the galvanic servo hauler. The target unit receives the benefit of cover if the shooting model is closer to the galvanic servo hauler than it is to the target of than it is to the target and the target is at least partially obscured from the point of view of the shooting model. And then it gives you a couple of examples on the next page uh, to explain that in further detail. Really nice little examples, simple and easy to understand. Um, it also mentions getting down to a model's eye view to give yourself a nice clear look at what your model, your firing model can see. Um, I'll just give you this example at the bottom with the pox walkers and plague marines behind the server hauler. Uh, here the plague marines are partially obscure, obscured from view, but one of the pox walkers is fully visible. Both of these units receive the benefit of cover because the pox walkers are all within three inches of the servo hauler. So despite the fact that one of them's out in the open, they all receive the benefit of cover. And then onto the mission, mission 46, the evacuation. Uh, this is more about the evacuation of the... Uh, actually, yeah, last week's mission was a bit of a mess up, wasn't it? So we don't really know where we are in terms of mission at the minute. Um, however, this week's mission is more about the evacuation of the planet of Kalon. Kavon? Corvon. Corvon to the city of Kalon, or vice versa. Yeah, Corvon 2 is the planet, Kalon was the city. Um, so, Corvon 2 is in the grip of deadly war that is spread across the entire planet's surface. The Ultramarines and their allies are doing their best to evacuate everyone still stranded in a besieged world. Streams of refugees and decimated planetary defence forces, force regiments, are heading for the few functioning spaceports in the remaining safe zones. Um, and what the Space Marines have to do in this mission is try and get the galvanic servo haulers, haulers fired up 
to clear the barricades that the Death Guard have put up. So the Death Guard have put loads of roadblocks in place to try and uh, try and hamper the escape of the Imperial citizens and uh, try and get more pox walkers for the, into the fold and stuff like that. So um, what the, the idea of this mission is, the Space Marines have to, the two objectives are, sorry, the two servo haulers act as objectives for this mission. It shows you where to place them on the map. And um, if you control those objectives at the end, you gain one victory point for each objective that you control. Um, and the Death Guard deploy in the middle of the board this time, uh, just near one of the containers, one of the arm Munitorum Armour containers. The Space Marines enter from either of the short battle edges, short mat edges. Um, the Death Guard have three command points, a Lord of Contagion, seven Plague Marines, ten Chaos Cultists, twelve Pox Walkers. So that's what, 30... Uh, 30 miniatures in total. Space Marines have 14 miniatures in total. Um, three command points, one Primaris Captain, five Intercessors, three Aggressors, and five Space Marine Scouts. Um, so, although that seems, you know, weighted in favour of the... I've mentioned this from time to time, I think I mentioned it in last week's video. It seems weighted in favour of the Death Guard, because they've got so many more models. However, all of the Death Guard models, apart from the Lord of Contagion, are single wound models, whereas... Most of the Primaris models, most of the Space Marine models are at least, have at least two wounds. Um, the Space Marine Scouts only have one wound, but still you can uh, use them to your advantage with various things like I'll talk about in deployment. Uh, the Death Guard player deploys their units first. The Space Marine player may then deploy their Scouts units using the Concealed Positions ability. So that's an ability that's on their data sheet and um, it explains it on there. The rest of the Space Marine units move onto the board at the start of the first movement phase. The Space Marine player takes the first turn. Um, so that means there's no wasted turn for the Death Guard. If the Death Guard took the first turn, they could only really try and get hold of the Scouts. <laughs> so, because there'd be nothing else on the board. Um, but the Space Marine player takes the first turn, so they move onto the board from one of the two board edges. Um, it doesn't say that you have to roll a dice to see which edge they come in from. So um, what you could do if you wanted to make the mission a bit more challenging is just for each unit you want to deploy, so starting with the Primaris Captain, um, roll a dice on a 1, 2, 3 comes in from one board edge on a 4, 5, 6 it comes in from the other board edge and same for the intercessors and the aggressors so then you might only have units on one side of the board whereas uh, the other side of the board would be harder for you to get to them uh, if you're finding it too easy as a space beam player it might be worth just uh, changing things up like that a little bit and then on to victory conditions the first player to eliminate an enemy unit gains one victory point if you eliminate the enemy warlord um, you gain one victory point as well. Each objective controlled at the end of the game, so that's one of the two servo haulers, or both of the servo haulers if you capture them both, uh, one victory point. And the game lasts five battle rounds. Um, that's it, yeah, that's it for this week's issue. On to next week's issue, what are we getting? We're getting <gasps> the Curse of the Walking Pox Spreads. So, despite the fact that last week's mission said we were using 30 pox walkers, we don't yet have 30 pox walkers. They're coming in, the rest of them are coming in next week's issue. We have at the minute 22 pox walkers. Um, but yeah, we get 10 more in next week's issue, so that'll take us up to 32, which is a total for what we're getting across the course of the subscription, or just the magazine if you buy it in the shops. Then what are we getting the following week? We're getting <gasps> an Astro Granite refill. Mm, some people will be a bit disappointed with that. Um, I know I had one comment uh, uh, last time we got a pot of Astro Granite. I had one comment uh, complaining that um, and I, I can totally understand why, because we've got a lot of Astro Granite now. However, with all the big bases we're using it on, um, if you're using the Astro Granite, that is, if you're using it on the bases, then you'll be using a lot of it. Um, but, the and I'm going to be using it on all the bases, as you've seen in some of my showcase videos, I've painted the Death Guard bases one way and the Space Marine bases another way, but both using Astro Granite. Um, but yeah, it'd be nice if they put in some uh, Astro Granite debris instead of just Astro Granite, the standard Astro Granite, just to give us a little bit of variety, variety of texture. Um, on the initial launch of Conquest, it was heavily indicated that we'd be getting some Martian Iron Earth, and that's not materialising. Um, I don't think we're going to get that anytime soon. Uh, it makes total sense because the mats that we've got, they're all grey or shades of grey. Um, so having a grey texture paint on your base makes total sense. 
Um, however, I can understand why someone's disappointed. Uh, there's been a few variations on what we've what we've been expecting in the magazine. Um, I don't think they showed any paints on the original poster that they showed, but there's only been one variation, I think, from the original poster, and that was the objectives that we got a few weeks back. Um, oh, no, it was last week we got the objectives, wasn't it? Yeah, we just uh, we couldn't really use them in the battle report because they didn't give us the right scenario. Hopefully, uh, the text that was supposed to be in last week's issue will be in next week's issue, but um, we've just got to keep our fingers crossed. And if it's not, then uh, everybody's got a complaint to hatch it, and hopefully they or Games Workshop will release uh, updated text for last week's issue. If not, um, I'm planning on coming up with my own mission, so I'll share that with you as and when I do. Um, yeah, we'll leave it there for now, guys. Um, a little bit of a disappointing issue in a couple of weeks' time, but let's end on a positive note. We're getting all the Poxwalkers next week. We're going to have so many Death Guard miniatures, it's crazy. Right, we'll leave it there for now, guys. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the battlefield.